With a QRS of 0 0.16, what's what's the diagnosis? Bundle branch block. You look at one and V6, which bundle branch block is it? What? Right. right. It's a right bundle branch block because you've got a deep S wave in V6. Do you have an RSR prime in V1? Sort of. Uh, I call those volcanoes. Volcanoes. Okay, so it doesn't look like the, uh, the traditional right bundle branch block. Why is that? Because what? Everybody's different. No, that's not why. What is absent? In a traditional right bundle branch block, you, you have this. What's absent? What is that? What? If you're if you're V1, that big deep S wave is electricity going away from V1. It's going away from V1 into the posterior wall of the heart. Does that make sense to you? So how come there isn't any electrical forces in the posterior wall of the heart? Yeah, there's a posterior wall of MI. What else could do this? There's one other enlarged thing. Right. An enlarged right ventricle. Right ventricle hypertrophy could do this. So every time you see this, this RS, this QRS business, you're, you're trying to figure out where's the electrode, what's it seeing? It sees in a straight line, really. Okay. So V1 and V2 are sitting right up here on the front of the chest and they're looking straight through the heart. And so all of this stuff on the below the line is our posterior forces in V1 and V2. And <clears throat> V1 ought to have a little bit of up swing and a big deep S. S2 ought to have, V2 ought to have the same thing. With a little more R, a little less S. And there should be transition around V3, V4, and then there should be more R and less S. And, and that's all because the left <coughs> ventricle, which is most of the electrical force, is sitting laterally and behind, with the right ventricle sitting up on the top. Does that, does that make sense? So we have lack of posterior forces. We either have a lack of posterior forces or too many anterior forces. The most common thing is, with this kind of thing, is it's a posterior line. Okay. Do we have Q waves? Yeah. Where are they? Two, two, three. two, three, and F. What do we call that? Inferior wall infarct. Age? Old. Oh. I'd call it old. Because the T waves are upright, the ST segments are concave. I'd call it an old, in, old inferior infarction. First degree AV block, right, ben, right bundle branch block, old inferior MI. There's one other finding. Excuse me, the anterior and septal. Someone said it was an irregular rhythm. What's irregular about it? The R to R's are not the same. Why aren't they? Because you've got two beats that are too early. Okay? The, the uh, second beat over here on the left and the second beat in the V leads is too early. Where is it coming from? Where is that early beat coming from? You think it's coming from the ventricle? Where are all the other beats coming from? Where, what's the pacemaker of all the other beats? The SA node. And the QRS in those early beats looks exactly like the rest of them. Since the morphology of the QRS looks exactly like the rest of them, it's coming from the same place. The electrical conduction is coming from the same place. So it's a premature atrial contraction. <coughs> Does everyone understand that reasoning? 
If it was a PVC, if it was a premature ventricular contraction, the QRS would look different. It would have a different morphology because the electricity would be kept starting in the ventricle instead of in the atrium. So the conduction on these premature atrial beats is exactly like it is on all the other beats. It's just coming early. So we call it a PAC. So you might say this is an irregular rhythm of PACs. First degree AV block, right ventricular block, posterior wall MI. What's the axis? LD. Negative. <coughs> Left axis deviation. Any, any other findings? Did you say right yeah. ventricular yeah. I'm sorry? Can you confirm right ventricular block? You mean right bundle branch block? <laughs> <laughs> it's okay. It's okay. It's okay. I heard it, but he meant bundle branch. Okay, I was just making sure. I said right whoa, ventricular whoa. block? <laughs> right bundle branch block. Gotcha. Perfect. Okay. Just checking. I was like, I'm not doing it. Any other questions? 22? So, Go. I thought um, there was some anterior septal ischemia on this one because the depressed oh, ST. Oh, because the ST segments are upside uh -huh. down, yeah. or the T waves are upside down. Yeah. What's the T wave rule in a bundle branch block? It doesn't matter. It doesn't matter. No, it's not that it doesn't matter. Everything matters on the end. They're opposite in direction of the, in every lead, if you have a bundle branch block, the T waves need to be opposite in direction to the last portion of the QRS. If you have a bundle branch block and it looks like this, that's a primary T wave change. That's inappropriate. <coughs> But if you look at this EKG, all the T waves are appropriate for a bundle branch block. Good question. Is that strain? Um, well, uh, I, I, I suppose it could be. You could think of B1, B2, B3 as being kind of strange because it's kind of asymmetrical. Um, but I only think of strain as a way to help me toward left ventricular hypertrophy. So yes, you could you could call those you could call those ST ST T waves to be too strain. So the QRS is how long and there's a bundle branch block. You would not classify that in the S score for LVH. Yeah, that's a great question. Uh, what, the strain? Mm -hmm. Or the, because this has like prolonged QRS QT, mm -hmm. it has a strain. So oh, strain. yeah, you can't call them QRS. Um, I don't ever look at, I don't ever look at strain okay. in bundle branch blocks either. Okay. So it's only bundle branch block, not LVH. Well, but in LVH, you said you have to have only. S Such a big one. one. Yeah, I, 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 so I look at this EKG, There's nothing about this EKG that looks like look. We'll have to figure out first. There's no big R wave in V5, right? Remember we, we count the R wave in V5 and add it to the S wave in V2? There's neither one. There's not an R, there's not an R wave in V5. There's not an S wave in V2. Can't count them up. You probably can't make the diagnosis of LVH on this EKG. The patient might have it. If you got an you know if you got an echocardiogram, you might have it. If the conduction is so abnormal because of the right bundle, you, you wouldn't be able to diagnose it. But Tammy's right in that V two and V three look strange because they're asymmetrical. All right. Where are we? One or two. We just got one done. <laughs> Yep. Okay, so
So I got sinus tachycardia, um, heart rate 180, PR is 0 0.04, QRI is 0.12, Q2 0.28, um, negative 70 for the axis LED. Um, got pre excitation syndrome, atrial flutter, anterior septal. Um, primary fluid changes, anterior age indeterminate, and septal old MI. Okay, so you named two rhythms. So you, you first said sinus, and then you said atrial flutter. So sinus rhythm is a, is a rhythm. Sinus rhythm. Atrial flutter is a rhythm. So you got to choose between the two. How would you tell the difference between a sinus tachycardia with a possible pre-excitation syndrome or an atrial flutter with a 2 to 1 block? So the way I would do it is to see if the ventricular rate, if, if the rate is a multiple of 300. Is it? I got 150. I got 150 as well. So would you call that flutter or? I call it flutter. Okay. I call every... Every EKG I see with a rate of 150 flutter. And the reason I do that is you can't tell necessarily what the rate, you know, what the rhythm is on the EKG. But it's much more likely to be to a flutter with a two to one block than it is to be sinus tachycardia. So I call everything that's a multiple of 300 with multiple P waves in between, I call it a flutter. <clears throat> so I think the rate is more like 150. Probably atrial flutter with a two to one block. Now, Q waves where? B1, B2, B3, B4. What is that? Anterior septal infarct. Age? What? Acute. Acute. T waves are upside down. Well, what's the QRS? Who read this? You got to own up. What's the QRS? I got point one two. Point one two. So, is there a bundle branch block? No. I got. How many got a bundle branch block here? That. Third of the class. I got a bundle branch block here. <laughs> Where are the key waves at? Where is the key waves? Well, you can't see them because it's too fast. Okay. Can't see them. The reason you know it's atrial flutter is it's one fifty. So then, can we say that there's pre-excitation syndrome if you can't find the key waves? No. You could, but you probably wouldn't be right. <laughs> It might be, it might be that PW, but you can't really see the P waves. You really can't figure out what the PR level is. You can kind of see them in 83, but. Okay, so you're saying that there's a bundle branch. First criteria is that the QRS has to be wide. Now, if you had calipers instead of eyeballing this, you can find one or two in the limb leads that are a little bit wider than 0.12. So I call it 0.13. Therefore, I have to find a bundle branch block. I look for a RR prime in V1, and it's not there. Why isn't it there? Because there's no R wave. There's an infarct going on, so there's no R wave. I look at V6 for the right bundle. What do we see in V6? We see a big V best wave. Is it there? Yeah, it's there. So, this is the right bundle branch block with an anterior infarct. Yeah. How is there not an R wave in V1? What's the big thing coming up? The big thing? Uh -huh. Oh, that's the, that's, that's the R prime. This is what you see 
If there wasn't an infarct, you'd see this. Right? If there was no infarct in the anterior wall, you'd see the rabbit ears. Yes. But what you're not seeing is that. Because there's an infarct. So you're just seeing that. You're just seeing the R prime with the R gone because of the infarct. How do you know you're seeing the R prime and not the R, I guess? Like, yeah, that's the first R. And the second one. This is part of the this is part of the problem with nomenclature on EKGs, this whole business of QRS. QRS, you know, I, I told you day one. This is a QRS is a car. Now we've got to figure out is it a Dodge or a Porsche? And that's the problem with trying to figure out is that an R? Is that a QSR? Or is that a QSR prime? And the reason you know it's a QSR prime is because the rest of the EKG looks like a right bundle branch block. It's the company it keeps. Can I ask a question? Yes. Um, so the anterior septal of QMI, so yeah. I see one that has an inverted T wave, but the other three look like it might be an old. So if there's just one, would you still consider that acute? Okay, so, so you, you have the additional problem with the STT waves here. The STT wave rule kind of changes when you've got a bundle branch block, right? Okay. So the the ST the STT waves in V1 and V2 are appropriate for a bundle branch block and they're upside down. When you get down to V3 and V4, they're inappropriate for the bundle branch block because the T wave's upright and so is the last R wave. So that's what makes it, in my mind, an acute infarct. Okay. You have upright T waves where they're supposed to be under, you know, oh. flipped. Other questions about this one? Mm -hmm. um, are there ways of need to create API? Like a small hill? No, it goes up a little bit. Four ways down in two and three. Are those, those aren't the viewings? That's part of QRS? No, that's part of QRS. Okay. I'm sorry? Yeah, but it, except, except R, R prime. The right bundle only counts in the other. Right. You don't worry about it. Two, three, nine. Okay, 23. Bethany. So, A, B block and rhythm are not the same thing. Is there a P wave before each QRS, and is the P wave causing the QRS? Yes, yes then it's sinus rhythm. Okay. So, sinus rhythm, heart rate waves, when someone Anterior infarction and an inferior infarction and the ages. Um, I think the anteroceptal or anter yeah, the anteroceptal infarct is old. Okay. The inferior infarct might be new. The ST segment's a little bit elevated. The T waves are upright. I don't really know what the age is, but 
I would accept anything you said on that one, yeah. Um, I got irregular for the rhythm. I just checked it again. I could be wrong, but... Yeah. No, no, it's a little bit irregular. Okay. But um, it's a sinus irregularity. Okay. If you... So there's a... There's a uh, little bit of a sinus <laughs> irregularity in everybody with respiration. Um, and there's a little bit of sinus irregularity in everybody, no matter what. So sinus rhythms aren't perfectly, perfectly the same. Sinus rhythm, Q waves in 3 and a half, not in 2. Infarct there, infarct in V1, V2, V3, V4, and lateral ischemia. Flip T waves in, one may be up. Would there be LVH at all? I'm sorry? Would there be a possibility for LVH or no? LVH? Well, those S waves in, in V2 are pretty deep. 5, 10, 15, 20, 25. And you've got the P wave in V1 that's a, it's biphasic. Um, so what does that give you? 4, 5. Probable LVH, maybe LVH. Okay. So, um, if you have the deep S wave in V2, the bi-phasic V wave in V1, when it shows up H1 alignment, because we said that they were, the S waves in V2, yeah, so, yeah, so if you're going to call, maybe not all the way down, if you're going to use the P wave in V1 mm -hmm. to count towards LVH, then it, by definition, it's left atrial enlargement. Remember that the, so the criteria is the same. In V1, when the P wave is biphasic, and it's 0.04 wide and 0.04 deep, or one millimeter deep, that's the criteria for a point toward um, LVH, and it's also the same criteria for left atrial enlargement. So you can double count it? Oh yeah. Okay. That's why, yeah, that's why it's there in LVH. Oh, okay. Because the left atrium gets large. Is, is the criteria for left and right atrial enlargement the same? No. The criteria for right atrial enlargement is a tall P wave in lead two. Okay, I huh? saw in lead two. It, well, two or three. I saw the P waves in V1 and V2 as inverted and not biphasic. So I don't, okay. I don't, how can you tell? Because then I put junctional. Okay, so look what I wrote here. It's the terminal portion of that P wave that matters. If the whole thing is terminal, you got the same thing. So a flipped P wave in lead V1 is the same as a biphasic P wave if it's one of those wide points. Okay. Anything else? Yeah. Can you explain to me again the acute versus old? Because in the example, mm -hmm. the acute was like just a Q wave with an elevated ST, but we've been calling that old. And so. <laughs> This will depend. This will depend on um, which author you're reading. If you go online and look at EKGs, um, you'll find a variety of readings for acute MI. Since the mid 1980s, when STEMI came out, when people started making the using the diagnosis STEMI, they kind of changed the way they. <coughs> the way most authors changed the way they um, <coughs> aged myocardial infarction. Um, so what I said initially was that this is an acute MI, right? Many authors will tell you that, uh, that that's an acute MI as well because the ST segment is elevated. So why is what is happening in V1, V2, V3 old instead of acute? Okay, so the ST segment, if it's elevated, it's one box. I mean, I'm just not impressed. And the, and the QRS is concave. I mean, the ST segment is concave. 
and the T wave is upright. Okay. I see it. Does that make sense? Uh -huh. I was seeing all this one going up. Yeah, so we haven't talked about this, but this finding where you have a Q wave and the J point, or the place where the ST segment begins, which is called the J point. When the J point is elevated off the baseline and the T wave is upright, that is probably more likely, that's probably more likely to be an aneurysm of the left ventricular wall. Okay? Now, trying to figure out what your EKG shows helps so much to have an old EKG. You'll hear clinicians say, you know what I need is an old EKG. Yeah, there isn't any, you know. Here you got this guy, he's from Baltimore, he's in your ER, and you don't have an old EKG. But you would really like to have one to see, when, did he have these Q waves a year ago? What happens with the left ventricular wall is that when it infarcts, the tissue is dead. It ain't going to get well. It's dead. And so it doesn't contract anymore. And so now you've got, if you can think of a bag of contractile tissue, and a little part of it is dead, when the rest of it contracts, the dead part might balloon out. That's called an aneurysm, right? <clears throat> and when you have an aneurysm in an old infarcted area, it almost always looks like that. The J point's elevated, the ST segment's concave, T waves upright. So when there's that little flattening out right before it goes into the hump, you're saying aneurysm. That's the difference. It's that little kind of notch right there. Oh, no, it's not the notch. It's that that notch is elevated. The notch is elevated. Yeah. So see that sharp? Here's the baseline. That sharp place right there is that, that notch, that sharp point, is when depolarization quit and repolarization started. That's defined by the J point. When the depolarization is over, and repolarization starts is the J point. It's elevated, the ST segment is concave, and the T wave is upright. It looks like, it looks old to me. Now, <clears throat> if you, if you see this on the, on the internet, pull up some on the internet, they may show you that same picture and call it an acute MI. Um, so, in the clinical situation, you, 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 you figure out what's going on with the patient. Right? If you're just reading an EKG, this is probably an old MI with an aneurysm. These are, uh, these are nuances that you're not going to have to worry about on the exam. Yeah. Sorry, I have another question. Um, on one, two, and three, it looked like there was like a gap where there was a QRS missing. V, uh, V1, 2, and 3 or 1, Just two, 1, three. 2, and 3. There's a what? It almost looks like there's like a QRS complex missing. Why is that? That was causing like the regular sinus, but I didn't know yeah, why. Yeah, the second one is early. Okay, so it's because the second one is early. It's a premature. It's just a, it's just a sinus, it's that sinus irregularity. 24. Normal axis 
I saw mm -hmm. left ventricular hypertrophy and um, inverted T waves of V2 to V4, so the anterior Anything else? Um, oh, I see. That's it. Okay. Um, what was the axis? Normal. I got a plus 20. Plus 20? Yeah. Um, you got minus 30. Yeah. 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 Minus 30. Was right so on the edge. Looking, you did, you, how many are using one in ABF now? So what is it if you use one in ABF? Left axis deviation. And then if you look at two and three, um, your two and three support left axis deviation? Not really, because they sort of cancel each other out. Two and three cancel each other out. They're equidistant on each side of the, and they're about the same, except one's up and one's down, so they kind of cancel each other out. So this is going to be, if you use the criteria I gave you of minus 30 and greater, this is right on the border. Yep. If you use the criteria that Jacob gave you, it's left axis deviation, right? Because you're just using one maybe F. Doesn't matter. It's okay. <laughs> <laughs> so, um, I, just to clarify, I got negative 25 when I actually drew the axis. axis yeah. Excuse me. So, is anything below negative 30? Is that considered LED or? No, no. Yeah. So, it depends on the criteria normal. you're using. Okay. When Jacob lectured, he used that entire quadrant. Mm -hmm. Yes. And a lot of a lot of cardiographers do that today. They, they use that entire quadrant as left okay. axis deviation. So even if you had a minus 10, let's say that's a left axis. What I told you was everything above 30 is left axis, and this is all in one board. It, you know, it just depends on whose criteria you're using. I didn't make this up. I'm using Marriott's criteria, who was uh, sort of a guru. Uh, when I was training, and I've got his book, and so it, it sort of depends on which, you know, which method you're using. If you're using the one in ABF, you can quickly just diagnose this as a left axis deviation. Okay. Any other questions? Mm -hmm. So would you call those peaked P waves in I would. I would look at these two. The, the, the P waves are, are sort of peaky. They're kind of not very, they're kind of narrow and tall. They're peaked. And then you look at V1 and you see that biphasic P wave. You're kind of wondering in your mind, are both atria enlarged a little bit? P, a tall P wave in lead 2 is, is right atrial enlargement. A biphasic P wave with the down portion being bigger than the up portion is left atrial enlargement. So. Both atria might be a little bit enlarged. Did you call this um, lateral ischemia? Yeah. 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 Anterior, lateral ischemia. Anterior, lateral ischemia. Anterior lateral inferior. Everybody got anterior lateral ischemia? T waves are down in 1 and L. They're down in V, 3, 4, 5, 6. Would it also be inferior? And also an inferior lead, at least in two and a half they're flipped. Yeah. So there's probably inferior ischemia as well. Okay. Or at least primary T wave changes. Other things on this one? 25. That's the I said it was a sinus rhythm target about 80 PR interval point two QRS. I had to do the point one two. QT.32 had a normal axis. Um, because of the enlarged or the elongated PR interval, I said it was first 380 block. And then I had Q waves in 3, V1, V2, V3, V4, and an inverted P wave in V1 and 3. So I called that an 
anterior septal infarct that's acute. Okay, and the age of the infarct? Acute. acute. Why did you think it was acute? I think we were reading this wrong in the question. This was before we asked that question. <laughs> the ST segment starts like one box, one little tiny so box above. It looks old to me okay. because the ST segment is concave, T up right. upright. Um, that's less important than, the age is less important than picking up the Q wave. So, um, how about the Q wave in lead three? In three, they're free. I like that. That's what. Jacob said? Someone else? Another, yes, Another, oh, in three, they're free. That's good. I like that. Yeah, so if it's isolated in three, it's free. It's not important. I like that. So does isolated mean? It's not there in two and a half. It's not there in his siblings. So it's not. We don't want to worry It's free. Was there two conversion in one ADL and two six? It's lateral ischemia. Why is that not surprising? Why is it not surprising that the high lateral wall looks a scheme in the CKG? Because there's an infarct right next to it. It's yeah. the anteroceptal wall, which is next to that lateral wall, low lateral, high lateral. It's a little surprising to me that, that the T waves in, in five and six aren't flipped, but, at all, but in six they, they, really, they are kind of abnormal. Yeah. Um, I don't think there is one. I think the PR is less than 0.2. I think it's probably 0.1. 0.16. Other questions? I put. I don't know if it's. I put left atrial enlargement. Okay. I don't know if I'm right because I. Well, it's a bifacial P wave up there. Yeah. Okay. Another question? Too much lead. Oh, kind of the, the lead two looks weird to me in, in between okay. PRS. Yeah. Lead two what? It looks odd. Just you mean the second beat? Uh, just lead two in between. Yeah, in between oh, the first beat. From lead two, second beat, it looks odd. Yeah. No, in between the first and second beat is what I was asking. Yeah, yeah. What looks odd about it? Wavy and not too much, too many squiggles. Yeah, basically. Yeah. So you look at something like that. Look at the rest of the EKG and see if you see the same thing. You don't. They probably hiccuped or they moved or it's probably an artifact of some sort. If it's there in all the leads, then you got to figure out what it is. But if it's only in one, one or two leads, it's an artifact of some sort. Especially if you look at the leads that are lined up in a row like this. And if there's squiggles in that same one small spot, then it's movement. It's artifact. Mm -hmm. okay. And they are kind of mm -hmm. odd. They are odd. Except for leaf wood. Two and three are both yeah. odd. So I listed having artifacts, but I wasn't sure. So is that not pathological then? No. Just An artifact is by definition not, a, not abnormal. It's something artificial. So either they're touching metal or they move. So when you're having a patient, if they're running the EKG, they can't be hanging on to the bed rails. They can't have their legs crossed. Those kinds of things. My oldest son, who has three teenage kids, about uh, eight, eight or ten, eight years ago, moved homes. And I got there about a week after they moved in. And they moved into this, in this big house. And, and uh, the boy, who at that time was uh, seven, came running up to me and said, Doc, Doc, I found a historical artifact <laughs> in the house. It's an historical artifact. And I know he's thinking Indiana Jones. And I said, great, what is it? And he reaches in his pocket and he pulls out a tape from a tape recorder. It was a 1980s band. <laughs> Historical artifact. <laughs> yep. That's why Doug doesn't have any hair. I came for the CD. They literally, in the museum, had the phones that I grew up with that were landlines that you have to have got. Oh, man. I literally grew up in a, in a dugout. It's a house that's just dug in the ground, doesn't have a top on it. 
It comes up about three feet and has a flat roof. And it was out in the country. And the phone we had until I was age 10 was on the wall. And it had one of those cranks, literally had one of those cranks. <laughs> <laughs> oh, my God. Okay. Uh, city design, right? Yeah. City design, yeah. right. Um, Michelle. 27? <laughs> yes, because 26 okay. is missing. <laughs> That's correct. Um, so I got normal sinus rhythm with a rate of 65. PR interval of 0.18, QRS of 0.08, QT of 0.4, and then the axis I got LAD with a negative 65 degrees, and then I got acute inferior MI. Hey, did anyone find anything else on the CKG? Everybody's agreeing with uh oh, rumbling. <laughs> what? For a lot of QT. I didn't hear. For a long QT. Yeah, the QT's kind of long. What did you say it was? 0.40? I got 0.40, yes. What did you get? 0. 0.44. 0.44. 0.48. I got 4.4. So it's a little long. And if you called this a long QT, um, it would be, it'd be reasonable. We said 0. 0.44, 0. 0.47. You know, it's a matter of when we don't know which it is. Is there a little bit of an inverted T-wave in the septal region? Well, in B1 there is, for sure. B, B1 is inverted. Um, B2, B2 is kind of flat. People would call B2 flat. They would call that the primary T-wave change. In B3, it's upright. Mm -hmm. So it's changing. Do what? So it's like below and then flat and then above, so it's changing as you progress down. You called, if you called this primary T-wave changes in the aerocephal leads, it'd be fine. Anything else? Are we on 27? Yeah. yeah, because 26 doesn't exist. Oh, it's acute infarct, right. Acute inferior infarct. Yeah. Alright, 28. Acute infarct. What? On the back side? Yeah. DM. Yes, sir. Okay. <laughs> I got normal sinus rhythm uh, with a heart rate at 85, a PR interval of 0.12, QRS 0.04, QT of 32, um, a normal axis. And then I found a Q wave in V1 through V5, which I said was an old anterior septal MI. Okay. Hey, yes. I got a cute. Um, a cute in part mm -hmm. because the SC is elevated. Okay. Anything else? I want to make sure that when you guys are calling them an MI, that it's going to be infarct on your test. That it won't say MI. Mm -hmm. So use the words or try to use the words in infarct when you're saying that and ischemia when you're not seeing an MI. Okay. Mm -hmm. So that you keep that straight. Did everyone get a sinus rhythm on this? I know. No. I got it right here. There's a note at the front, up on top, that someone wrote, atrial fib has, a, has replaced previous rhythm. That's what I wrote. Must have been. Oh, you wrote that? I was like, what? No, no, no. no. Someone, someone, who read, someone who read this EKG, I got these out at the heart station. Someone who read this EKG says atrial fib has replaced the previous rhythm. The right bundle branch block is no longer present. Oh, yeah. But you don't have a previous to compare it to. But this is atrial fibrillation. Mm -hmm. So if you map it out. There's multiple T rays. Okay, so it's atrial fibrillation. It turns out atrial fibrillation is one of the hardest rhythms to call on an EKG. Okay? Because there are always, almost always, some squiggling going on in between R to R. Okay? There's almost always some squiggling, even in atrial fib. So the two tests for atrial fib is, is there a P wave that's married to the QRS? Is the P wave causing the QRS? 
you can always find something between those R waves that look a little bit like a peak. How do you know it's causing the QRS? Well, the P wave ought to look the same among its siblings. The P wave ought to look the same in 2, 3, and F. The P wave ought to look the same in 1 and ABL. The P wave ought to look the same in V1, 2, and 3. If there's a P wave and if it's causing the QRS, that's the sinus rhythm. The second criteria is an irregularly irregular rhythm. And this one is um, so fast. What's the rate? 95. 90 to 105. It's so fast that it's hard to see the irregular irregularity, which is what, where these come in really, really handy. The, these will um, save your life as an EKG reader. When you put these down and you wrap it out, or if you do what Tammy says, lay down a piece of paper and mark up your R waves and move it around, you'll see that these things are coming at a very irregular rate. Very irregular rate. Okay? So this is April 5th. Yeah. If you have atrial fibrillation and the rate is greater than 100, we call it atrial fib with a rapid ventricular response. And the reason we worry about a rapid ventricular response in atrial fibrillation is that in atrial fibrillation, the ventricles are not filling appropriately, right? The way the ventricles fill is the AV valves open in early diastole, the blood just falls, and then late in diastole, the atria contract to complete the filling. In atrial fibrillation, there's no contraction, so they're just sitting there doing this. The valve's open, the blood falls, but there's no late, late diastolic contraction of the atria, so the ventricles don't get completely full. So you have inadequate filling, and then if you have a rapid ventricular rate, uh, there's less time to fill it passively, so cardiac output can, can fall. Or cardiac output can get into trouble in atrial fib with a rapid ventricular response. Any more questions about this 28? We're getting faster. <laughs> We're getting a lot faster. You're getting faster at night too, huh? I didn't say speed demons, I said <laughs> faster. Yeah, pretty Snail to turtle. Yurkowski. Alright. Uh, yeah, first name? Paul. Paul. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know why I don't have your first name now. Okay, Paul. Uh, 29. No, that is my first name. Yurkowski, Rakowski. <laughs> uh, sinus rhythm, rate 100-ish, PR 0.16, QRS 0.04, QT 0.32, I got LAD at negative 60, and then an acute anterior septal MI, and that's about it. Mm -hmm. Or infarct, not MI. Mm -hmm. Okay, so acute anterior septal or anterior lateral infarct, um, LAD, sinus tachycardia. Yeah, I got 100 exactly, so I didn't yeah. call it sinus tachycardia, but okay. close. Okay. And um, how about two, three and a half? Inferior infarct? How many called there an inferior infarct? How many did not? So this is a really hard one, right? Because there's a tiny little R wave. If you look really, really hard. <coughs> Probably it. Probably there's a tiny little R wave. So this probably is not an inferior infarction. No. It would be borderline. I would give you something like this on, on, on the next. Any other questions on this one? Is there an AV block? 
There's an AB block if the PR is greater than 0.20. You got 0.2. How many got a first degree AB block on this one? So, a third of the class. Um, yeah, so what I wrote down for the PR is 0.20 to 0.21. It, it sort of varies in the limits, and so I call it the first degree. It varies a little bit. This is one that's on the borderline, so you have to, but I have to just take my calipers and measure them in the limb leads to see if there's a first degree. Other questions? Or is it just greater than 0.2? You mean for a bundle block? Or 80 blocks. 0.20. Oh, that's not greater than 80 blocks. Are you talking about bundle branch blocks? No. First degree. First degree block. block. Okay. So I think most authors say greater than 0.20. Okay. Yeah. Which is why I wrote down 0.20 to 0.21. I can find some places where it's a little greater than 0.20. First degree block. You know, clinically, what does it matter? Well, if the PR is too long, it's either a, it's either a first degree block now, or it's probably going to become a first degree block in the near future. And most of the time, it doesn't matter. <coughs> most of the time, that's not a clinically significant problem, but it might be something you're watching on a longitudinal basis. So for number 30, positive. Um, okay, I got sinus rhythm, uh, heart rate 85, PR 0.20, QRS 0.12, and then QT 0.32. Um, for the axis, I got negative 55, so LED. And then my conclusions, I got first degree AV block, um, LED, primary T wave changes in the anterior <coughs> lateral wall, and then left atrial enlargement. Where's the infarct? Um, in the anterior wall. Anyone find an infarction in the lateral wall? Yeah. We put anterior lateral. B four, five, and six. B one. So some people might call this an infralateral MI. Problem is the inferior wall MI looks old, and the lateral wall is either recent or aging determined. T waves are still flipped upside down in the lateral wall, so there may be different times. The inferior infarct looks old because the T waves are upright and the ST segments on the baseline. Any other questions about 30? Yeah. Is the ST elevation in V1 and V2 anything Well, there is, um, well, I don't know. Look at V1. All STT waves in all three beats look different. I think there's some artifact going on. In, in lead uh, V2, um, they look a little bit abnormal because they're kind of convex. Um, so if you called that anterior ischemia, you wouldn't be wrong. Yes. V4 and 5? Yeah. I don't think I'm seeing what you're seeing. QRS. It's a QRS. So they're not bunny ears. Um, it's just you've got yeah. a Q and you've got an S. Where, 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 where are we yeah. talking about? B4. B4. What? That was B4. What were you talking about? She was talking about B4. Okay, what's the difference in final understandings? Injury and ischemia. Shouldn't they be the same? Injury and 
Okay, so so let me um, who needs to who needs to bring me some EKGs from a from a recent EKG machine to see what see how that computer has been programmed because I haven't seen one in a long time. So okay, so. The way, the way these things were described, so that we could figure out how does the EKG reflect what's going on in the heart, was done in the laboratory in the 50s, in the 1950s. Someone took rabbits or dogs or some animal to the lab, opened the chest, tied off a coronary artery and put electrodes on it and said, what is happening? And what happens is that you have this happy looking EKG and when you tie it off and make the myocardium ischemic, what they found was the first thing that happened was the T wave inverted. Jacob said the first thing that happens is the T wave gets spiky. I don't know if that's true or not. I know that for a fact this is true. If you leave that ligature on long enough, this will elevate. So the way that looks is this. You've got a convex ST segment and the T wave is dumped over there on the end of it. Does that make sense? That's injury pattern. So this is an ischemic T wave. The way I think of this is, if I take that ligature off here, that T wave will flip right back up on right up, upright, and I won't have done any damage to anything. When it's this way, I don't know exactly what's going on in the muscle cell. I don't know if I've left it on too long. I don't know if I can get full recovery because it's injury pattern. When there's injury to the muscle cell, it's probably leaking troponin. It's probably leaking enzymes into the blood if it's injured. So this one might refer back to this and back to a normal. You might see that going on. Or this one might turn into a key wave infarct. Where I've left it on so long that it's killed the muscle. When it kills the muscle, a key wave develops. Does that help? So I'm going to say, I'm going to say it one more time. The language that I use is a little different than the language clinicians use today. They don't talk as much about injury as they talk about STEMIs. And language matters. The reason they do that is so that they will act quickly and appropriately when they see someone in trouble in the ER or on a treadmill. Language matters. Language is metaphorical. So STEMI generates anxiety. It generates action. Injury, not so much. So they changed the word a little bit so that their action would be better and more appropriate. Does that make sense? Yeah. So I'm sending a patient to the cath lab if they have an injury or so if I see an injury on my EKG, they're going straight to the cath lab, regardless. And that's just what you're saying. You're saying STEMI just to send them out as fast as they can go. Right? Uh, yeah. Uh, so, so, so let's play this out. You're a PA student in the ER at South, Integra South, for Jacob practice. And you get an EKG that looks like an injury pattern. There's no Q wave. But the ST segment is ugly, right? 
That's bad looking, and you see it. Now, you can't, you're a PhD, you can't send someone to the cat lab, right? But you can act. You can grab your attending and say, this looks bad to me. And they say, yes, it's bad, let's call Jacob. And Jacob says, yeah, send them, send them up and we'll cat lab. Does that make sense? So it's a, it's a matter of getting your attention. <clears throat> if they have this, some people call this a tombstone injury, uh, STEMI. Now here's, here's the other thing. This is the other reason that you don't just send them to the castle. I've, I've, I've said this before. Here's your baseline. Here's your J point. Aneurysm. This is a ST segment elevation. The patient is lying in your ER saying, I've got horrible chest pain and I've had it since midnight. It's now 8 o'clock in the morning. Horrible chest pain. I've had it since midnight. And you've got this EKG. When Jacob was, was lecturing the other day, he said, that's a STEMI. It's an infarct. They're having an infarct. Get into the cat house. But it might not be. It might be pericarditis. Pericarditis looks exactly like that. And it causes chest pain that you can't tell from a heart attack. Except that it's been unrelenting for eight hours. Angina generally isn't unrelenting for eight hours. Nonetheless, you've got what he calls a STEMI. What you've got to do as a PA student in the ER is get some help. <laughs> you've got to get someone who knows hearts down there. They retake the history, redo the exam. They redo the history, they find this eight hours of pain, and they go, that doesn't really sound like ischemic heart disease. Um, they put their stethoscope on the chest, and they hear a triphasic friction rub from the inflammation in the pericardial sac that you didn't hear. But because they're erring on the side of not missing an MI, they always call that injury pattern or STEMI or get them to the cat. Um, can you show on that again what uh, the aneurysm looks like? Is it, it looks baseline like elevation? That. Oh, okay. It looks just like that except there's a few way. <clears throat> so it's it's an gotcha. old MI, and the J point where depolarization stops and repolarization begins, the J point's elevated off the, off the baseline and the STT wave is elevated. That's what an aneurysm looks like on EKG. You would do an echo and see the aneurysm. You'd see, you'd see the wall of the ventricle bulging out while the rest of it's Contracting in. Other questions? So for Friday, we'll do uh, through 40. Uh, and uh, Professor Rachel will go over So on that last one, was it an injury or was it a. On 30? On 30. Because there is no cue. I called it a lateral wall infarct. I called it an old inferior infarct. And lateral extent. Um, lateral wall infarct, aging determinant, left atrial abnormality, and old inferior infarct. That's what I call it. Left atrial what? Abnormality. Okay.